time of the year, everybody's thinking about spending, of course, because it's the holidays. But dum dum dum, January is coming. So here to help us all fix up our finances for the year to come for 2017, please welcome to our show author, radio host, and all-around master of money, Dave Ramsey. <laughs> People forget, you get so kind of intoxicated around the holidays. We all yeah, overspend. <laughs> no, well, literally, too, also. But yeah, I mean, we all forget, the, you know, the, that budgets exist, that bills exist. So we actually asked a lot of our viewers um, to give you some of their top financial questions. And then I think you picked, like, the top three most common. Absolutely. Is that how it rolled? What, what came in number one for you? You know, one of the biggest mistakes people make these days is the amount of home that they buy mm -hmm. and how they fin finance it. You know, for mm -hmm. instance, we surveyed the audience and asked who has a 30-year mortgage, who has a 15-year mortgage. Almost everybody had a 30-year mortgage. Now, who in here had the 15? All right, rocking it. Way to yeah, go. Give good job, people! Good. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about why for a second, because it's really important. It's the, in, the difference is very little in a 15-year or a 30-year mortgage. There's not a lot of difference in the payment. You know, the average payment right now, average house mortgage in America is about $200,000 across the whole nation, okay? That's the average. And so if you did that at 3%, which is the going rate, a 30-year mortgage is only $843 a month. Mm -hmm. hmm. But a 15-year mortgage is 1300 so it's a little more a month. But here's what you do then. You take 30 years of payments versus 15 years of payments, and look at this. we got a difference here of like $55,000. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge you're, difference. You're buying too much house, and you're overpaying when you do, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And, and so you want to take up, when you're buying your home, you want to put down 20%, because that avoids PMI, private mortgage insurance, which is expensive. And if you do that, and you take out a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage, where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, then you got a house you can afford. Wow. And and you can afford to do other stuff you need to do with money, like enjoy life and have a retirement plan and some of the other stuff we'll, well talk Dave, about. That, that's great advice. We actually have an audience member that's going to ask you a question. Samantha, what do you have to ask Dave? Hi, um, I'm from Westfield, New Jersey, and my husband and I are um, in our 40s. I yeah. have a 13-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old son. Ah. Um, and we started to save for retirement, and um, we're stressed out because now my daughter, who's 13, will be going to college soon. So we're just worried about um, what we should focus more on should we you know start saving more towards that college um, and forget about retirement you know putting away for retirement and just worry about what's coming up first do you have any advice for me no. on that so, so let me get this straight you got a preteen and a teen and you're a little stressed about money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that shocker That's shocking so you, you know one of the problems with money stuff is is that we try to do everything at once we're gonna pay $50 extra on the credit card $3 extra on the mortgage right. we're gonna put a little in the 401k we want to do a little for the kids college we're trying to do all these things at one time and nothing gets done right but what I discovered a couple years ago I ran two full marathons in one day my, are you kidding me my first and my last oh. <laughs> But, well, so when I finished that that day, when I finished, I realized you can do anything if you do it a baby step at a time. Yeah. If you just don't quit. And if you'll focus and lay them out. So we came up with a thing years ago that we started coaching people on called the baby steps. Jesse, I'm going to get you to help me. Go over to the other side of the chalkboard sure. there. And let's put these in order. Okay. You do these baby steps in order. They're in order. Say in order. They're in order. In order. In order. Baby step one is a $1,000 starter emergency fund. Grab that. Put it up there by number one. This is my so best uh, Vanna White. There you go. That's it. And do, do this when you do it. That, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, I knew we'd get some work out of him today. Yes, it's okay. fun. Do you so, have an emergency fund? Um, a little bit, okay. yes. So we'll start with that starter, <laughs> okay. beginner, baby emergency fund. Then I want you to focus on your debts, everything but your house. Now grab the payoff, everything but the house. No, not right, the home. Over there. Payoff, all debt but the house. That's right number there. two. You list your debts smallest to largest, you attack them in that order with a vengeance, knock off the little one, then knock off the next one. Really focus, get clear of that. Because if you don't have any payments but a house payment, now you got some wiggle room in your budget, right? And, and so then we're going to go to baby step three, three to six months of expenses in savings. So we're going back to our $1,000 account, raise it up to grandma's fully funded rainy day fund. It's going to rain. Dave, you should be positive. I'm positive. It's going <laughs> to rain. 
Right. Okay. <laughs> no, number four is then we're going to do four, five, and six at the same time. Four is where we get to your question. We're going to put 15% of our income into retirement. And then five, we're going to be doing college funding for kids. And if we can find any money above that, on top of the 15-year mortgage, we're going to pay the house off early. Now, with no house payment, you're all the way down to baby step seven. You become very wealthy and outrageously generous, okay? That's where we're heading, okay? But we'll go back up here. Doesn't you're he make gonna... this sound ridiculously simple, <laughs> yes. right? But there's so much work that goes into oh, each hard. one of these things. It's but hard. if you just do one at a time, it really is doable. You yeah? can get there. So to your question then, okay, we're going to put 15% only into retirement. If you got more than that, back it down so we've got some money to throw at the kids. Now, here's the thing. You're going to retire. The kid may or may not go to college. So, you, you know, and there's a lot of way to pay for college, only one way to pay for retirement. That's, that's right. You can get all sorts of assistance. Scholarships. You can do that old-fashioned thing called work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We all did that. And they're done that. It ain't child abuse, baby, you know, okay? <laughs> and moms and dads, listen, be very careful when your kid's picking a college. You be the parent. Put your arm around them. They're 18. And lead them to a college that they can afford. It's not a vacation. Yeah. It's supposed to be an education, right? Right. They don't need a skylight and a jacuzzi and a racquetball court where they stay, okay? That's right. And people do this stuff, and then they come out with $140,000 in student loan debt and a degree in left-handed puppetry, right? <laughs> and so you, you get yourself in a mess, right? So you just, you get got to control moms is, and dads. Which walk is through way them. harder than right handed puppetry. <laughs> and you know that. It's somewhat like gecko petting, <laughs> though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a degree in some schools, maybe mine. I hope you're DVRing yourself so that you can go home and, and study these. Or you could just take the green bricks when you leave. <laughs> I won't mind. Okay, here's our last one, and it's from uh, Carrie. Uh, the lease on my car is about to run out. I was wondering if purchasing my next car is a better option. I would imagine that's based on how many miles you drive. Uh, well, we call them a car fleece. A car fleece. Because you're getting fleeced. Ah, uh, the yeah, leases the car, are the built to, to be yeah, money make makers and not... For them, you. not you. Right. Yeah, it's the most expensive way to drive a vehicle. Car is the largest thing we all buy that goes down in value. And so you got to be real careful with cars. I like cars. I'm a boy. I want you to have a nice car. I just don't want your nice car to have you. And the average car payment in America today is $500 a month. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that blows my mind. Yeah. And so what we suggest you do instead, what millionaires do, people that, how they become a millionaire is they don't have a car payment. Yeah. How do you not have a car payment? You drive a cheaper car. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! You, afford, you, know, so. you buy a car you can afford. What a novel idea. So we're going to get rid of the car payment, and let's start by just doing it grandma's way. Let's get a cheap, a hoopty. And I'm from Tennessee. We call it a garage sale car, okay? A beater, right? And a you get, get you a $5,000 car, okay? And when you get a $5,000 car, then you don't have a car payment anymore. So you got that 500 bucks a month freed up. Let's put $500 a month just in a cookie jar right. for 10 months. 10 times 500, 5,000, right? Now, good news about a $5,000 car is during that 10 months, it's not going down much in value. It's pretty well <laughs> That's done. Right. Okay? Right. So you can still sell it for you five grand. You can still sell it to the next guy who needs to start. There you go. Oh. Now it's got a pay it forward thing going. I feel okay. so smart when people like this come on. <laughs> I mean, it's fleeting. It'll end in like 15 minutes. We'll go back to being old and old. What do I do again? Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. Let's get those bricks out again. Yeah. <laughs> so 500 bucks a month in the cookie jar. You sell the $5,000 car. You put the $5,000 cash with it. And now you now get a $10,000 car. car. And so on hey. and so on. Which, by the way, is a whole lot better than a yeah. $5,000 car. Yeah. This is moving way, way up okay. the ladder. Because you, you don't want to drive drunk your whole life. You want to drive like no one else, so later you can drive like no one Actually, else. Actually, you know who does always drive, only drives used cars? Warren Buffett. Yeah. Look how rich he is. Yeah. It worked for him. It probably Of course, he also has private jet, but. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. There's that. <laughs> yeah. So then you could take the $10,000 car and do it again. And you and, just and keep doing it. And have 15 or right. have a 20. And then you have 15 but and you're then you do paying 20. cash. And then you got the $500 for your college fund. You get the $500 for your 15% going into retirement. Right. And, and you're freed up, and you're not putting money in things that are going down in value so drastically. And then scratching our head. I mean, you're amazing. Do you have one final tip? Because I don't want to say goodbye to you. You're so smart. Oh, you're <laughs> smart. Thank you. I'll come back and keep talking <laughs> like that. So, <laughs> Give us a bonus. 
the, the way we all make mistakes is we do something off to the side instead of looking at the whole. Yeah. And when you look at the whole, it's called a budget. And a budget's not like I live on less than I make. A budget is you give every dollar a name every month before the month begins. And the world's best online budgeting app is called everydollar.com. It's free for your iPhone or your Android, every dollar, because you give every dollar a name every month. You'll feel like you got a raise when you do that, and you'll be able to accomplish these baby steps and do these And goals. that's the one that really concerns me this time of year, because it's, it's that time of year, like I said, everybody oh, yeah. goes cuckoo in November oh. and December, and the budget goes right out the window. Oh, they're all spending like they're in Congress or something. <laughs> <I'm getting laughs> You're wonderful. I'd put you in Congress any day.